Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you five editing mistakes that could be making you look like a beginner and how. Alright, so I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017, and I've got a couple different sequences open to demonstrate these editing mistake examples. However, no matter what editor you're using, these are pretty universal, so you could probably still learn something. So the first one, can you see it? It's the default text titles or bad default styles. So when you're working with titles in Adobe Premiere Pro, you should be familiar with these default text styles that come built into any program. And even in the new Essential Graphics update, they also have some default graphics and text overlays. And let's be honest, has any of these word art type of styles ever really looked that good? Obviously, they're not all horrible. But you got to be careful with using these presets because it's pretty visible for anyone who's familiar with the program. Or if you're on a site like YouTube, I'm sure we've all seen those old lyric videos, with that classic blue and white style, and it just doesn't look the best. And a way to fix that is just use simple custom styles and text graphics that you can build from scratch. So instead of using these preset styles, we could consider a nice, clean, modern looking font. Obviously, you have all the typical graphic design tools that maybe if you're familiar with Photoshop and those principles to consider like centering and alignment and make sure things are nice centered and balanced within your image, a nice size. So something like this, a lot more simple, a lot more friendly on the eye and easy to read. And it's just a better title in my opinion. So next up, we're talking about bad slow motion. So I have some, a lot of videos on how to actually do slow motion Premiere Pro, but a clear sign of a not too experienced video editor is having slow motion that's stretched down way too far. So if I have a clip like this, I can't just go stretching it out as far as I want and make it as slow as I want. The program and the clip has limitations as we shot it. So something like this is just so slow that it's almost looking like stop motion. Instead, you want to consider the frame rate that the clip is shot in. So this one particular was shot in 50 frames per second. And that means that you can slow it down to about a normal 24, 25 frames per second, and then it would still look normal. So instead of just stretching it out to 8% speed, just because I want ultra slow motion, it doesn't really work like that. I only have so many frames to work with. So instead, I'll stretch it down about 50%. And now I have a somewhat slow motion and if you have a more capable camera you can do 120 frames per second footage that'll allow you to stretch it down much more slower next up we have cheesy effects so if we're ever working in premiere pro there's a ton of cool effects that are built in in the right hand panel however you have to understand how to build these effects a little bit of subtlety and also that some of these effects are here for functional purposes rather than stylish purposes. So if I'm in the effects control panel on the right hand side, let me delete all these fake lightnings and especially the lens flares. Those are hard to pull off and actually make look good. And instead, if you do need to stylize your clip, you can use the effects in more fitting or subtle combinations and adjust keyframes of them to create simple effects. So let's say I want to do a quick blur hit for some type of music video or something, I could add a keyframe on the blur length, move over a couple seconds, increase the blur a bit, and then move over and revert it back to zero. And then in that area, we'll have a quick blur flash. But basically, study up on what these do. I have a ton of effect tutorials that might help you get more familiar with these. And once you're familiar with them, you'll understand that, oh, these are for color correction, these are for blurring, this works like this, and this might work well in combination with that. And really, just practice makes perfect with these. And once you know the rules, you can begin to break them a bit more. But again, lightning and random lens flares never really look good unless you really know what you're doing. So next up for the fourth common editing mistake, we've got next to bad effects, bad or cheesy default transitions. So has a page wipe like that ever screamed to you, this guy's a great experienced editor? Maybe, I don't know. But again, the same vein as the titles, these video transitions that are built into Premiere, 
are sometimes a bit cheesy. Really, I don't think I've ever seen a great use of some of these, like the page peel, unless we're talking about like a school presentation. So keep in mind that you can create transitions in different ways rather than just these presets. And also, I'll repeat over and over in this video that simplicity is key. My favorite transition is just the cut. There's nothing wrong with cutting from one clip to the next, and often when you time it with music, it can really look the best. But if you want more on transitions, I have dozens and dozens of more intricate transition effects in a playlist on my channel, which I'll link you guys to. And remember that considering your shots in camera will help you transition between them more smoothly, even with just something like a cut, or whenever you right click and apply the default transition, that's just a simple fade which is kind of like the second most simple transition in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, there is some cool ones in here like dip to black or dip to white, which can work well in certain projects. However, in order to use some of these more stock ones, I'd say you have to combine them a bit more intricately and maybe go into the effect control settings and do a bit of customization so they work well within your project. So next, let's move over to the final and last editing mistake. And this is something a bit more intangible. It's all about pacing and timing. So a simple example I have for you is when you're editing to the beat of a song or music, if you're just letting clips play without trimming them to their best parts. So this part randomly just leaving the clip on as the shot is being set up. And even as the music is playing and these beats are hitting, you're just kind of letting the clips change just the way that you drag them in. So it would be like, I just dragged all these clips onto the project and said, there we go, that's my project set to music. Wherever the cuts ended up being, that's what happened. Instead, you'd wanna synchronize the music and consider the pacing of the project. So right here when the beat drops and the important parts of this clip are finished, you can move on to the next clip and it'll usually create a more pleasant experience for the viewer because Things are synchronized, they're switching on beat, and there's some pacing and timing to the project, which is nice for them to watch. I have a full tutorial on that as well. And of course, the creative possibilities with timing and pacing is pretty endless. And it's something that you have to have the vision of in your head and practice that skill of how you display that with the clips that you're working with. Because overall, that's really what editing is. It's arranging and sculpting these clips, projects, and effects together to create your final project. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it below, let me know what you thought in the comments, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my new videos. Go follow me on social media, at Justin Odisho. If you wanna reach out to me, I'm real active on Instagram. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.